So let's start here. Let me start with Vashti, uh, who is joining us also from D.C. Uh, North Carolina will be in the Final Four, yes or no? I started off with a tough one. Adam, I mean, yeah, yeah, (laughs) you started with Ty. You didn't didn't even, you didn't even warm me up first. Just straight to it. Uh, It really depends on their region, but if you're holding me to the fire, I'm going to say yes. I like the way they've been playing. More importantly, I like the drive that they have Uh, Mm -hmm. after yesterday's win. uh, Elliot Cadeau told me in the locker room. We haven't won anything. Like, we weren't, a lot of us weren't on that Final Four. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Armando Baycott has, they said they haven't won an ACC tournament. So winning matters to them, which is quite a juxtaposition to what I heard in the Duke locker room mm-hmm. yesterday. But uh, they seem to have a drive and they have a chemistry. The, the Tar Heels are having fun, uh, they shoot the ball well, uh, they have that post presence. And more importantly, they are dogs on the court, and that's what you need in March. I think they have the perfect mix of what you need to go far in the tournament. Uh, usually when that happens, you know, there's always a hiccup. But since you're making me say it now, yeah. I'll say, yeah, I like them. I like them as a Final Four team. All right, yeah, we were, we're, we're not messing around here today, Vashti. <laughs> we're going right for it. Uh, we have we and we have three teams to deal with, uh, with varying levels of expectations. Brendan, uh, would you agree that North Carolina is going to go to the Final Four? Yeah, if I was going to put bread on it, that would that would, I, I'd, I'd put them in there, uh, and and mostly for the the reasons Ty illuminated, right? Like she, like I I, I think that she, uh, her talking about what they were talking about in the locker room is the most illuminating thing for me because I'm watching them from you know from thirty thousand feet. And I can it that stuff that she's talking about it shows up on the court, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you like you, you talk about Harrison Ingram, you talk about um, Cado, like Cado is is a guy I've really had to come around on. Like when <laughs> I was the the first part of this season, they were playing him like as the primary point guard, and like he was really handling the ball a lot. And what they've done is kind of move him off one because he's a fantastic cutter. Yeah. Like that dude is an athlete with a capital mm-hmm. AF. Like. For real, like that that movie makes with the up and under going damn near full speed. That's that sort of body control. That is a great athlete, and he and you see it on the defensive end. And so it's it's good to to like for me to see the the growth in some of these players and with the coaching and how they handle some of these guys. Like that, those are important things that while you may have the talent even to begin with, you don't know where you need to be. And now, although he's not a great shooter, his speed. And his ability to change, accelerate, decelerate is something you don't always see from young players. And his ability to finish at his size, like those are the sorts of things that I look at in terms of everybody seems to know their role and 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 are more than eager to fill it. Here's the thing about uh, Elliot Cadeau that is so impressive to me. Everybody knows not only is he not a good shooter, he doesn't really want to shoot. And yet he can still get to the rim, which means either – Y'all are dumb, or he's good enough to get where he wants to go anyway. And I don't think these people are dumb. I think he's good enough to get where he wants to go. He's also the other part is this too. Okay, again. Well, no, I'm saying like if you if you give him the runway because what the 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 response can be oh well why don't you just sag off of him. But if you give a great athlete that sort of a runway, you're kind of giving him a fast break and a half court opportunity, and right. that can get bad for you really quickly. And he'll get to the cup. So it's even as a bad shooter, there is still some gravity that he that he generates just off the, the strip of his game. Yeah, you don't you don't really play off of him. You guard him close, but you guard him to drive, and not and yeah. not to shoot. So I mean, look, uh, he's been. I thought even though maybe the box score didn't say it. I thought he was a key component of the first win uh, for Carolina over Duke in Chapel Hill. And he was a big part of what we saw, even though Cormac Ryan had an out-of-body experience. And I want to get to that, and I'll throw it back to you, Vashti. Uh, two years ago, Brady Manick was a, a revelation at the end of the year. And that run was very much manic infused uh, the, the way he played defensively against uh, Paulo Bancaro in the the game uh, that uh, ended Coach K's home career, 
Not a not a great night for the folks. Brendan is enjoying this. Not a great night for the folks at Cameron. But the way he defended Paulo Bancaro was was game changing, and he also provided an attitude. Cormac Ryan, well, he is a very good defender. There's no doubt about that. Much, I think people probably underrate him for that. Uh, but his attitude, as well as Harrison Ingram, has really shaped. I think this team. You played. You know what that attitude is like, right? Oh, absolutely. And and I and I would not I wouldn't say that Ryan is the Brady Manic. Honestly, that, that team, that Brady Manic led team was, was crazy because they had so many ups and downs that year. Right. And and that season Brady Manic was the only one that was really holding people accountable. This year, everybody's a dog on that team. But if we're talking about maybe somebody who we didn't expect to be the guy it, to me, it's a, it's a Harrison Ingram more than a Cormac Ryan, just because I don't, Harrison Ingram makes them go, and that's kind of what Brady Manick did that year. He was he was the the beat, you yep. know, the baseline. He was the baseline on that on that team. A good baseline makes the song, and that's kind of what Harrison Ingram is to UNC. He's the baseline, and no question that that R.J. Davis is the melody. He's he's how that he he's 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 what you pick up on, but Ingram is a is a is a baseline and and he's been playing great even when he doesn't score a lot of points, you know he gets rebounds he's diving on the floor he sets a tone uh, and, and that's that's the reason why they've been playing so well. Who's the rhyme? Who's the rhyme, Brendan? Oh wow! Um, I mean, I mean, I just want to finish it. I want to finish the I mean, track. Baycott doesn't. Baycott doesn't give me rhyme. <laughs> Nothing about Baycott gives me rhyme. Like that's the next guy you have to mention. But it's like, nah. I mean, I, mean, I, I appreciate the alley. I really do. I really do appreciate the alley. It's just, oops. I, very, very nice. This is uh, this is way. Look, I I had high expectations for this segment to begin with, but uh, it is exceeding my expectations already. We haven't even gotten to Duke. Uh, so something that uh, Brendan, you were talking about, and I think Vashti, you mentioned it too. Um, it leads me to this: trophies matter, right? Uh, winning something matters. Uh, so Carolina won the regular season, which we can play around with all you know, all day long about what it means. They won it by two games. So it matters. They played Duke twice, right? You don't play. We don't have enough games to play a true round robin. Uh, well, we probably play too many conference games anyway. Uh, but the first trophy is this one. So it should matter. And in other sports, we have mo- LeBron James wanted to win the play the uh, the NBA in season tournament. He wanted to win it. Maybe because he wanted to win the first one. Maybe he knew the Lakers wouldn't win the, the next one, the, the really big one. So you got to win something. So th- this could be a pelt on the wall for UNC. Um, did Duke, as a group, and I'll start with you, Brendan, do you think Duke took this one seriously? I don't know how you don't take an agency, I mean, an agency tournament game. They won it last like, year, right? Like, yeah, like I mean, but but it's not like that team's full of a whole bunch of NCAA tournament champions. You know what I mean? Like you you really that's really been your that was their first trophy, right? Last um, year. And I and, yeah. and and nobody wants to lose to state, right? <laughs> that's oh, the other man. thing. Like, what like is let's, that? Be, let, let's keep it a stat, bro. Like you you lost to state. <laughs> Who Holy has been mackerel. like pretty pretty mediocre to bad at, at several points? Like that's a that's that's right up the street. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. And so like I, I can't see them being disinterested. I thought they just they played really poor. Like uh, Phil Bukowski was fantastic. He's, he was? he's he's been their guy. 28, 14. Uh, McCain and Roach though combined three of 12, 13 points for four turnovers. Like that's. That's rough. You needed more from the backcourt. Like that, they don't get much from their bench. Like they, you have your starters have to shine, uh, and they just both of them kind of laid a, a, a monumental end when they really needed them to be better. I thought it was funny because I saw the clips afterwards. Like Roche, like yeah, we're going to have a players only meeting. Hold on, fam, you're going to announce publicly that you're going to have a players only meeting before you do it. See, that's already a problem right there. Like that's not the whole point of players only meeting is for it to be the inside group. <laughs> Right. And you over here giving, you know, tossing it up on the timeline. Like, there's already a disconnect. And that's generally what I feel now. Like, I, I mentioned Filipkowski was great, but you didn't get anything from the backcourt. Like, them all being on one accord, it feels like it's been a while since, since we've seen a solid, great stint of Duke basketball. Yeah, uh, nobody wants to lose to State. That was Brendan Witter. We have to save that. Uh, Vashti, you've been at so many of these games. It's really uncharacteristic of Jeremy Roach 
to play uh, big badly in, in back-to-back big games. He was really good in the game at Carolina earlier this year. He and McCain were really the two best players for the Blue Devils in that game. Uh, Roach was uncharacteristically poor in the game against Carolina at Cameron, and he was, I know he, what, he had five points Last night, a non-factor. Yeah, five points. A nine, yeah, a points. non-factor in the game. Uh, what do you get? The what do you what do you sense from him right now? Duke will go as far as Roach takes them. I have been talking about this, and I really thought, you know, Jeremy Roach is from D.C. It's something about coming home to hoop, right? We're hearing that uh, the guy from Pitt, uh, and I'm not, I'm, his name escapes me, but he's from the area. He's hooping. When you come home to hoop. This is when you put on a show. I sat right behind the Duke bench, right in front of the Duke family. Jeremy had a bunch of family there. And for him to go one for six from the floor, one for four from three, three turnovers, four assists, inexcusable. Uh, And for him to have that on the heels of what he had, how he played at UNC, when after the game he told me this was on me, he took complete blame for, for for that loss. I don't know. I mean, he's the one who's going to have to get it together. Filipowski did what he needed to do. Even Mark Mitchell, who had a bad showing at care, I mean, against Duke at Cameron, had 18 points. So it's going to be Jeremy Roach. Jeremy Roach needs to have a players only meeting with himself (laughs) because he's going to be the one who's going to make this team go. When they went to the Final Four, he was the one who played very well, mm-hmm. and that's why they were able to to have that streak. And he mentioned in the locker room yesterday, he said, well, this is like that Final Four team. We lost to Carolina. We lost in the ACC tournament. So I was surprised. Like, they surprisingly were like, well, and he literally said, I, we didn't come here to win the ACC tournament. And I'm thinking, bruh, even if you feel that way, this is not what you say because you really want to win every game. But the point was they have bigger aspirations. They're, really, they're not going to come to fruition un- unless, they, unless he is the one to, to lead this team. He's a senior. He's a veteran. He's the one who's been there before. And he's the one who's playing, you know, like mid. And he's going to have to step it up. And he needs to have the meeting with himself. If he doesn't get it together, Duke will have a first round, a second round exit like they did last year when they ran into Tennessee. No question, they ran into grown men. They should have stayed home then. He should have stayed home then. I know. Like if you don't, if you don't want to win, stay home. Just I, kick it. <laughs> like, uh, you you at the crib anyway? Just go hang out with your family. Va- like, why, why, why why did you even play, bro? Vashti was Vashti was able to uh, you know give a. Uh, a coherent opinion without disparaging NC State. I think that's very cool. Uh, Brendan couldn't I quite... I like NC State, Adam. I really <laughs> like that team. I do, too. I don't know why Brendan just <laughs> hated on NC State. But DJ Burns is one of my favorite players in the ACC. He's likable. Yep. He really he's bringing back post-play. DJ Horn is a good guard. And it's just, you know, everybody knows NC State is going to NC State. And that hasn't happened yet. So the fact that, you know, they're still kind of rolling, you know, there is it, they're a team with nothing to lose. And that's the most dangerous, like in any room, the person with nothing to lose in a fight, they're the most dangerous. I like NC State. They're playing with a lot of, lot of edge, a lot of like, uh, you know, who's, 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 who, who knows? Who knows? I think, I think we'll see red and blue on Saturday night. And I look I forward. So. I look forward to that. Uh, a little North Carolina takeover. Uh, all right. So um, I mean, we all know that NC State's going to have to win that game Saturday night to get into the NCAA tournament. Uh, I'll ask. I'll close on the same question I asked about Carolina, about Duke Vashdi. Uh, the Blue Devils will be in the second weekend of the of the NCAA tournament. Yes or no? Yes because I think Jeremy will have a come-to-Jesus moment with himself. He'll, his own, his one, his sole solo player meeting. Uh, a meeting of one. He's going to have to go to the upper room and figure it out, but I think he will. Brendan, same question. Duke Ooh, will be man, playing I'm, in the second weekend. I'm really trying hard with my hate not to come out. But yeah, good luck I, with I that. Can't tell, I can't tell this an, uh, analysis or this hate. I really can't. <laughs> That's, we know this that's is hard. Real. It is. I, you see, you see, I'm having to come to Jesus moment myself right now. Um, 
Nah, I don't think so. I really don't. Like, I, I for real, I'm just, I just don't feel it. Like, maybe I'm just being prison in the moment because I know that this is a talented squad. They have, t that this is a talented team. At least their starters are. Um, but well, I just, I, I, I think that they're, I think they're an above average team. I just don't think they're an above average Duke team. And maybe I'm judging them based off of what the, the lineage has been and not themselves, and which is unfair. And it, it's against whomever you're playing. But I just don't feel anything special from this team at all. Uh, all fair comments, by the way, and you, you mentioned without uh, without taking another shot at state. Uh, appreciate I was very close. I was I, super I totally close, understand. my guy. I thought you were going to go back to it. Uh, Brent, I, was, and, I mean, no, but you did. Like, I was like, they were like, they're playing with nothing to lose. I thought about that. I'm like, Keats ain't coaching like you got nothing to lose. <laughs> like, I'm 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 pulling for you. I am pulling for Keats on the real. I am because no, that I don't know how much longer this is going. This whole not making the tournament thing is going to rock and rock. So. Well, that is true. Two uh, <laughs> two out of seven years is not good. Uh, yeah. Even though we had a pandemic, uh, you know, kill one year, and they probably should have gotten a bid uh, one of those other years.